A Laplace transform of f of t into f of s is denoted by the script L Laplace uh, operator script L operating on f of t and is defined as the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus st times f of t dt and usually the function that that equals in the Laplace domain is denoted by a capital F of the new variable s. So for example, if f of t is equal to e to the minus at, then the Laplace transform of f of t is equal to the integral of e to the minus st times e to the minus at dt, which is then equal to the integral of e to the minus quantity a plus s all times t dt. And if you solve that integral, you get minus 1 over a plus s times e to the minus a plus s t evaluated from 0 to infinity, which is equal to minus 1 over a plus s times 0 minus 1, which is equal to 1 over a plus s. As another example, if your function that you're taking your Laplace transform of is just equal to a constant a, then the Laplace transform of that function is going to be this integral of a e to the minus st dt, which is equal to minus a over s, e to the minus st evaluated from 0 to infinity, which is then equal to minus a over s times 0 minus 1 equals a over s. Now the Laplace operator is a linear operator, meaning the Laplace transform of a function of a constant a times a function f of t is equal to that constant times the Laplace transform of f of t. So that's one property of a linear operator. And the second property is the Laplace transform of two functions, f plus g, is equal to the Laplace transform of the first one, f of t, plus the Laplace transform of the second one, g of t. Now one of the great things about Laplace transforms is that a Laplace transform can get rid of derivatives. That is to say, the Laplace transform of f prime of t is simply s times the Laplace transform of f minus f of 0, where t equals 0. So to see that, We'll write out what the integral is, e to the minus st times f prime of t dt. So to solve this, we're going to integrate by parts. So if you remember integration by parts, the integral from a to b of u times dv is equal to u times v evaluated from a to b minus the integral from a to b of v du. So in order to integrate by parts, the first thing is we say, well, let u, in this case, equal e to the minus st, and dv equal to f prime of t dt. So that means that du is equal to minus s e to the minus st dt, and v is equal to f of then if we plug those things into our formula, for integration by parts, then the original integral is now equal to e to the minus st times f of t, evaluated from 0 to infinity, minus the integral from 0 to infinity of v, which is 
f of t dt, sorry, v is just f of t, times du, which is e to the minus st dt, times minus s, which we're going to pull out of the front of the integral. Now, if you notice, this integral here on the back side, that integral is simply just the Laplace transform of f of t, or what we denote as capital F of s. And so if you evaluate the first part of, the, of this uh, formula, you get the quantity 0 minus f of 0 as you evaluate this. And then you have plus s times f of s, which is the second term in your integration by parts. Or more succinctly, as we usually state it, s times f of s minus f of 0. Now, if you know that f of 0 equals 0, then you're left with s times f of s. Two other interesting properties about the Laplace transform is that you can use it to either estimate the initial value or the final value of your function. So the final value theorem says that the limit of f of t as t goes off to infinity is simply equal to the limit as s goes to 0 of s times f of s. Similarly, the initial value theorem says that the limit of f of t as t goes to 0 is equal to the limit as s goes off to infinity of s times f of s.